Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for uh, joining us in this afternoon session uh, Q&A for our um, CASIP application process. And we are also joined by some uh, CASIP alumni and some uh, prospective candidates uh, to help us um, understand the whole process of applying for CASIP. So the main objective of this um, afternoon session is to first uh, help those who are interested young political leaders in Asia put up a strong application process so that uh, it will increase the likelihood of being accepted for the next batch of CASIP uh, class for 2020 to 20, 2021 to 2022. And then of course, we would like to provide some clarifications if you have some questions regarding the whole program. So like example, uh, if the program is for free or you have to pay some uh, amount to participate or if there are other uh, um, processes that you have to undergo. And third is to understand better about the program. So we would like to give you some few uh, uh, presentation or lecture on what is CASIP. So what we would like to help you uh, find out if this is really the fit program for your um, career. And the last one is, of course, we hope that we will inspire you to apply and be part of the program through our um, CASIP alumni who will share their experience uh, uh, going through uh, the CASIP um, training. So um, the process for this afternoon session, um, I will give you uh, around 30 minutes uh, presentation about the CASIP, the whole uh, application process, and then after 30 minutes, we'll proceed with the Q&A session with uh, two successful alumni I will present uh, to you later. So one is from Mongolia and one is from uh, Malaysia. Then after the Q&A um, session with the alumni, then we will open the floor for um, questions. So for those who are tuning in right now on our Facebook um, page, we would like to encourage everyone to post your comments or your questions on the comment box uh, below this live session. Uh, please uh, uh, type your questions. Uh, and for those who are attending this um, webinar in Zoom, you can also type your questions in the Q&A uh, chat box. And then later we will entertain them and we hope to answer all of your questions and all, of all your um, clarifications. So allow me to share my screen for the short briefing about the CASIP program. All right. So again, this is our first time actually doing this CASIP application Q&A um, session with uh, me as the program manager and two of our CASIP alumni. And uh, we hope that this first initiative will help uh, facilitate a more conducive environment for those who are really interested to uh, apply for CASIP. And it will become more or it will be easier from your end to uh, complete your application process. So today is August 13, and uh, we decided to do this today because we still have one month to go before we close the application process on September 13. So we hope that the one month would be a good time or enough time for you to really finalize your application and put up a very strong one. So the selection committee will have a good uh, selection process or options to choose from for this um, uh, CASIP batch 2021 and 2022. So by the way, uh, my name is Ray Padit. I'm the program manager for political cooperation and uh, primarily uh, managing or responsible for the uh, Conrad Adenauer School for Young Politicians or known as CASIP. So to proceed, um, I would like to present to you the general idea or the general program structure. So the whole CASIP program is inspired actually by the typical life of a political leader. So we start the session or we start the whole training um, module 
with the knowing module. We titled or we named this as the knowing module because this module will facilitate um, the introduction of democratic or democracy um, topics. But at the same time, this module will help CASIP um, participants uh, to discover their political calling, or I would say their calling for public service. So part of this um, activities in the knowing module or the first module is what we call the bridging democratic leadership. So through this session, through this workshop, we facilitate the discovery of the political calling or the calling for public service of, uh, for our um, participants. So the following module is called the acting module. So logically, once you discover that you have the political calling, or I would say the calling for public service, the most logical next action is to act on this. And for political calling, or I would say for calling for public service, one of the most common way to realize this vision or this calling is to contest an election. So CASIP is there to facilitate or to help you learn and be equipped with, let's say, knowledge and technical know-how in managing a successful election. That's why the second module or known as the acting module is a module that will provide knowledge and technical know-how to our participants on how to win elections. So the workshop will be about strategies in election campaigning and other elect, um, election related uh, uh, topics. So let's say assuming that you are lucky and you win the election. So the third module is now called the serving module. Serving module in a sense that of course, the purpose why we want to run for election and win election is to serve the public. So we hope that CASIP is there to help you um, learn strategies in um, democratic governance so that you can help your constituencies realize their vision, what is good for your community, what is good for your constituencies. And we, we think that um, being a political leader doesn't stop from serving your, your, your constituencies. Um, at some point, there are constraints or limitations that we face when we are serving our community. That's why the last module is the connecting module. Connecting module because we believe that due to globalization and interconnectedness, um, there are a lot of ideas uh, uh, that's beyond or outside our communities and it's good to learn from them. And I think there are a lot of best practices that we can in a way adopt or maybe learn from them so we can become or better, uh, uh, become more effective as, as leaders in our own community. So that's why the last module of this um, training is connecting where we have a pass, uh, an opportunity to uh, meet other leaders from other countries and learn from their systems, from their experiences, especially the best ones. So from the CASIP module, we want to translate this into a framework. How do we do it here in CASIP? So in CASIP, uh, the framework that we follow for the module or for each module is the, um, a combination of two frameworks. So the first is the uh, andragogy or the adult learning principles, and then what we call the um, domain learning by Blooms. So we designed the module with the cognitive approach, the skills, and the affective uh, part. So we, we want that the CASIP module will be able to provide your, uh, the cognitive needs, the skills need, and the affective needs of our participants. So when we talk about the, the program framework, the cognitive topics uh, are divided into core topics and elective topics. So each module, let's say the knowing module, the acting module, the serving module and the connecting module, they have core topics and they have elective topics. And the elective topics, the participants can choose uh, which topic is very relevant, uh, highly relevant for their careers. And then the skills, of course, for the skills, then we have this political skills. So later I will show what are this example of skills training that we provide. 
and of course practice so the skills will only bear fruit if you keep on using them if you keep on practicing them and then we have the effective part of the program which is more on developing or nurturing democratic values and principles that can be translated into your leadership style or your democratic leadership and we also do or address the effective part of this or domain of this framework by engaging with um, your co-leaders or with the other young leaders in Asia or in the region. So next, so this is just an example of uh, the modules or the content uh, of the, uh, each module. So you have here module one, module two, module three and four. So in terms of content, you have the core topics, the elective topics, and, and when it comes to skills, you have training on communication and presentation, training uh, uh, in election campaigning, training in program innovation and design, and then the uh, diplomacy pro uh, protocol training. You also have your effective part, which is the leadership and engagement. And of course, we have some outputs to be delivered by the participants. And uh, the schedule usually start February of the next year. So let's say for CASIP 2021, to the 2022, um, we will start around February or March, and then that will be followed by the next module in August, and then April the next year. So let's say that would be 2022, and then September we end the, the whole CASIP uh, program for one batch. So well, CASIP may not be an academic program, but it's actually a rigorous training uh, or capacity development training. So there we have a certain or specific uh, program evaluation. So participants are able to uh, apply. I mean, uh, participants are able to participate in one module, but to be able to, uh, to participate in the succeeding module, we assess the performance of the participants. We monitor their performance or their participation during the module. So you have to meet at least 75% uh, of your performance um, assessment to be able to participate in the succeeding module. So like, how do we assess our participants during um, a module? So one is pre-training is 15%. We have 30% during training and then uh, post-training 15% and the modular assignments 40%. So uh, we invite only those who are able to meet the 75% uh, every after module to participate in the next module. And if you, um, let's say, uh, have been absent for two consecutive sessions or modules, then we would consider that as a voluntary um, withdrawal from the program. So in a way, it's really rigorous uh, in terms of your participation. And why we're doing this, because we want you to um, enjoy the full benefit of uh, the CASIP program. So let's now come to the eligibility criteria. I know some of you who are interested to apply uh, uh, may have some questions about these um, eligibility criteria. Later, if you have some questions, you can raise them so we can address them also. So of course, um, I think I can just explain or I will elaborate more for uh, some points that are uh, could be um, debatable or let's say could be uh, or if you have some concerns. So I think the rest of the eligibility criteria are quite um, self explainable. Uh, but let's say here number three, usually I get these questions from um, applicants between ages uh, of 24 to 35 at the time of application. So some would say, what about if I'm just 23? What about if I'm 36? Something like that. So based on experience, as much as we want, we try to follow the age um, uh, criteria, eligibility criteria 24 to 25. But of course, um, based on uh, experience, on history, uh, there are cases especially if they are exemplary cases, we give, um, I would say, uh, exemptions for those who are 23 or 36 uh, at the time of application. Of course, if the, the application is very strong, but as much as possible, we try to stick with the age limitation from 30, 24 to 35. So I guess that's, uh, that will give you an idea on uh, about how, how we address the question about age um, constraints. Um, number four, 
fluent in oral and written uh, English uh, language. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot provide, um, I would say, interpreters during the training program. So we use the English language as our main uh, language uh, during the training. Um, we don't require IELTS or TOEFL or other um, English examinations. So we just uh, um, trust the applicant to um, say or based on the application uh, form if uh, you are proficient enough to converse in English, uh, of course, the reading and writing English. And we do interviews in a way so that we can um, uh, uh, measure or uh, see how the person is uh, conversing in, in the language uh, using um, English. So there's no need or there's no requirement for English, for IELTS or for TOEFL. But of course, if you have, um, uh, I would say, uh, results from TOEFL or IELTS, then you can submit them as additional documents. Maybe that would help also in assessing your application. What else? So I think the rest uh, are self-explanatory. Um, if you have some questions, we can address them later. Next, um, I also received questions about, is this a um, program free or how much do we need to prepare? Is there a tuition fee? Is there uh, an amount that we have to uh, uh, put up before we can be uh, accepted? So actually, um, I would say that CASIP is one of the most generous programs for political training uh, that is available out there because this one is a uh, hundred percent, I would say, fully covered in terms of cost. Um, we do provide uh, airfare or the flight um, arrangement for the participants because we do the trainings in four different countries. So we fly our participants, uh, but of course we cannot afford to provide you business class. So we do uh, give uh, economy class uh, ticket and accommodation, uh, we provide them a uh, twin sharing basis. And if you need a visa to uh, travel to a specific country, it's also covered by the foundation and for some uh, local transfers, and of course, um, the food during the training. So there's no need to pay uh, uh, the foundation. You don't have to uh, prepare a specific amount so that you can be, uh, or you can apply for um, CASIP. So there's no application fee and there is no program fee. So you just have to complete the, uh, the application form, submit it to us, uh, uh, I mean, fill the information honestly and completely, and then we can proceed with the selection process. And if you're lucky, or if you're, um, I would say application is very strong, then there's a possibility that you will be chosen to be uh, a, fel a fellow or a participant for a CASIP batch. So again, I would like to repeat that there are no um, fees for CASIP. You don't have to have, you don't have to pay for um, an application fee. You don't have to pay for the program, no tuition fee. So, but of course, other, other costs uh, related to your attendance that is not mentioned here, then you have to cover that or the participant will have to cover that. So if someone goes shopping, then of course it will not be covered by the foundation. <laughs> so next would be application documents. So we posted uh, on Facebook um, the application together with the application information and then the, the process. So what are the documents that you have to prepare? One is of course the application form. Um, you, if you, you can actually write or use the PDF, it's a, a fillable PDF, you can immediately write there. Or if not, then you can print it and write and scan, no problem for us. So, uh, but to make it easier, then we uh, make made the PDF into a fillable form. So the application form, of course, don't forget to sign it. Don't forget that it's uh, completely filled. Then second requirement would be a photo, a pictures, a passport size with white background. Please do not attach. Again, I repeat, do not attach your photo to the, do uh, to the document or to the application form. You have to send it as a separate document or you have to attach it as, as a document itself or a photo itself, okay? 
Then the third one is the official nomination letter. So this letter uh, should be issued officially by your party or by your organization that you are actually the official uh, or you are nominated officially by the organization. So um, a requirement for this one is that you should use your letterhead, your company letterhead, your party letter, uh, party uh, organization letterhead, so it become uh, we can uh, assess that the document is um, official and of course signed by your superiors. Evidence of party membership, um, any evidence. It could be a letter from your parties or organizations, or it could be a photocopy or a scanned copy of your IDs. Uh, some parties, some political parties, the issue membership IDs, you can use them. But of course, be, be sure that whatever membership you provide, they are not expired, which means that upon or during the time of your application to CASIP, you are an active member of your organization of your political party. So what's the application process? Uh, we have opened the application process uh, in July and we will be closing the application process uh, in September, uh, this coming September 13. That's why we're doing this Q&A session so that for those who are still in a way I'm planning and maybe have not decided yet if they want to apply. So we hope that this Q&A session will uh, help you decide uh, with finality that you will apply at the same time, help you in your application process. So again, the deadline of your application would be this coming September 13. So I think one month would be enough for you to finalize everything, finalize your um, uh, required documents, seek your uh, official nomination and your membership, and of course your photo. And then uh, October, the whole month of October, uh, the selection committee will try to shortlist uh, based on the uh, applications received and we'll make an announcement who will uh, continue for the next phase, which is the interview. And that will be held uh, um, around October to November. And then we hope to uh, release the final list of accepted applicants um, this coming November uh, of this year. And then we start the program, the 12th batch, let's say the batch for 2021 to 2022. Uh, next year uh, around February. So question, how many do we get? How many do we accept in a batch? Uh, by experience, we usually uh, accept 20 to 25. So around the range of uh, participants. So it's quite competitive uh, because we want to ensure that the quality of the program uh, is strong, uh, then we, we cannot uh, afford to have more people and then it will uh, dilute, let's say, the discussion or the process of the training. So the number that we accept is around 20 to 25 per batch. So at least you have an idea uh, in terms of, uh, let's say, the, the, the level of competitiveness in the application process. So I think that's the general um, uh, information I can give you about the CASIP. And of course, if you have more questions, you can raise them once we're done with the Q&A with the alumni, and we hope to address them. Uh, I mean, we hope to address all your questions. So now we proceed to the next uh, part of the uh, Q&A uh, session. Now we would like to request our um, alumni to join us. So allow me to introduce uh, our CASIP alumni. Uh, first is we have um, Lee Chan Chung. He is actually from batch three, that's uh, batch 20, mm, 12 to 2013. So he's actually my batch mate. I'm also an alumnus of CASIP from batch three. And right now he is an elected uh, member of state parliament of, I don't know if I'm, of Pahang in Malaysia. So when he joined CASIP, he was uh, I don't, not elected yet. 
And then at some point he uh, contests for election. He was one of the lucky guys who went, uh, won election. So now he's an elected member of the state parliament of Pahang in Malaysia. So we have Chan Chung here. And then our next um, guest is uh, Kasip alumnus from batch nine, if I'm correct. That's 2018 to 2019, right? So Jorgalan Batbayar is a Kasip alumnus from uh, Mongolia. And currently she is the uh, vice chair of the women's wing of the Democratic Party of Mongolia. And I forgot to mention that uh, Chan Chung is from the People's Justice Party in uh, Malaysia. And also I think the national treasurer, if I am correct, apart from uh, being elected uh, a member of parliament. And Jargalan is the vice chair of uh, the women's wing of the Democratic Party of Mongolia. So ladies, uh, I mean, Jargalan and Chan Chung, first of all, thank you so much for sharing your time this afternoon. Uh, and we are uh, happy that uh, at least we can provide um, inspiration to those who are planning to apply for Kazip. And I would like to maybe start the session with you with some uh, questions and you can uh, share your uh, perspective to our alumna, uh, to our uh, prospective candidates or applicants. So um, the first is like, uh, we may have different uh, plans in our lives in terms of political engagement, but in your case at the time when you were applying, what, what made you interested in CASIP? What made you interested to this specific training, to this specific political training, or why did you apply for CASIP? So who would like to go first? I'm suppo supposed to be ladies first. Um, <laughs> if I may, maybe I, I can begin. <laughs> Jagalan. Um, actually, Jagalan and I both are also uh, the World uh, Adonawa Network uh, uh, members. So we, we met each other quite frequently uh, before COVID. <laughs> uh, yes. Prior to COVID pandemic and uh, Ray so uh, happened that uh, we were batch mate, uh, batch three of CASIP. So thank you for uh, having me here to share some of my uh, very humble, uh, what do you call that, uh, experience of uh, how I got into the CASIP network. I think CASIP caught my attention back in Malaysia when the uh, some of my party seniors recommended us. Hey, uh, there is a Germany foundation that is very um, keen to look for potential young uh, politicians uh, to join some intensive training. Personally, I am a guy that uh, really like training and uh, I am also craze, craving for more uh, trainings and exposures in improving my political knowledge because my background uh, was not from political science or from public policy. So I was an engineer by training. So as you know, someone uh, coming from engineering background, we always like to decode and also uh, to understand more about how political system works. And CASIP provides a very um, complementary uh, or rather very intensive uh, content uh, to uh, accelerate my learning curve and also to put me uh, on where I am today. I, I have to say it, it played a very major part in uh, getting me uh, to be what I am today. So I think it's, it's a point recommendation from my peers. Uh, and from there, um, I applied and I got into, I mean, this program in 2012. And my first training was in Singapore. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Uh... Chanshu, uh, what about Jordalan? Sorry, uh, Jordalan. Uh, okay. okay, great. We can hear you now. Okay, hi. Hi, everyone. Yeah, thank you, Ray, for organizing this. And uh, it's good to see my friends, both Ray and Chen Chung, um, at least, you know, virtually because of COVID. Um, my introduction to CASEP was through the CAS Mongolia the local Konrad Adenauer Stiftung office. Uh, our party and uh, the local CAS office had a very good uh, uh, cooperation for many years. And actually the um, uh, head of uh, local CAS then, Daniel Schmucking and Dulgun, 
they approached me and asked me to participate in this program, you know, consider applying for this program. And that was a very um, interesting period in my political career because, you know, our party had just lost an election and we were going through an internal restructuring reform process. And I took a look at the um, uh, cost of application and I really liked how the program had a very strong focus on political parties. And so since our party was in the midst of uh, a transitional period, uh, I thought it would, would be very interesting for me to um, attend the program. So that's why I made the application. And, uh, you know, um, and I would like to take this moment to, um, you know, give a shout out to Daniel Schmucking and Dulgon, wherever they are. And also um, Christian uh, from the CAS Singapore office as well, because, you know, the CAS uh, leadership, uh, the people who run both the local Ngoye CAS office and the Singapore office, they've been instrumental in helping our party, you know, go through uh, that transition. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, um, Jorga and Chan Chung. So yes, um, really many of us uh, for the CASIP alumni uh, were recommended by uh, some peers. So I believe that uh, those who are um, politically active or young leaders, um, they get this information or opportunities from our, I would say mentors or leaders of our mm -hmm. party. And yes, um, just to give an idea that the CASIP uh, program is uh, a flagship program of the Kornan Adinaw War Stiftung, um, Political Dialogue Asia here in Singapore. So just to give a, uh, a background for those who are not familiar yet, that the Kornan Adinaw War um, Stiftung is one of the political foundations in Germany. And uh, we are here in um, Asia to uh, capacitate um, young leaders uh, so that they can serve better their um, communities or their constituencies. So maybe we can proceed with our next question. Um, there are four modules in CASIP and we do it for two years. So we should we usually meet, um, I would say a four, no, in every six months. And this different modules have different thematic um, focus like as what I have presented. But with your experience of uh, two years or let's say four modules, what would be your most important lesson that you have learned from uh, CASIP or from the training? That maybe uh, this, uh, this learning is still very applicable or relevant to your careers now or maybe to your personal lives? Um, I, I think um, the experience we learned from um, Germany's uh, democracy is, is is very unique and and to me is always uh, exciting and how Germany can emerge from a war torn uh, nation yeah to become the world superpower uh, by having a very matured and a self renewed political system must be a key so from there I think uh, I mean it it really didn't disappoint me uh, I think the most important lesson uh, we learned from Kasip that just too many. So just to name a few, I think apart from the formal political module and training, which uh, Ray has shared to all of you, and which I'm surprised because the module is still intact and is still uh, very relevant and quite similar to what I have been through. Uh, that, that shows how uh, resilient uh, the course content is <laughs> until today. So um, I, I think apart from all the political system, local governance, uh, you learn about sustainability and all that um, uh, classic and also yet important topics. I think more important is also on uh, the exchange and discussions that we all had uh, by having a group of young politicians from diverse background, different countries. Like for instance, I've never really pay a lot of attention to Mongolia politics until I got to know uh, but by uh, personally yeah and, uh, and and that that actually put us into I, I think likewise to Malaysia yeah a country in Southeast Asia what has it to do with Mongolia yeah, China must be a much more important neighbor than Malaysia right mm -hmm. but I think by having that network that actually opened uh, and broadened our views and foster a lot of discussions along the way uh, formal and informal discussion sometimes heated debate and, and, and to realize how we see things differently 
uh, whether we are from opposition or we are from uh, the, the government of that country, I think matters. Uh, and, and I think by having this exchange and discussions uh, that really make uh, CASIP program uh, so valuable to me. Thank you so much, Chang Shu. Um, yes, uh, just to give an idea to the rest of the um, prospective candidates or applicants that CASIP is actually a democratic um, uh, program, which means that we accept uh, from varied political um, positions, ideologies, and uh, what is quite interesting for CASIP is uh, there are participants who are coming from the ruling party and opposition party of one country. Yeah. And uh, CASIP mm -hmm. provides them the opportunity to really engage with each other in a friendly manner. So maybe in their own countries, they are, uh, I would say, in a, a different uh, mood. But when they go to CASIP, uh, it opens the, the, the door for them to really discuss matters about their countries. and that, makes the, the training more interesting and I would say more enriching because you have you're, you ha you're given the opportunity to uh, I would say discuss eye to eye with an opposition party or with a ruling party within a CASIP that fas uh, facilitate um, dialogue and facilitate uh, open discussion uh, among the participants. So yes, thank you for reminding me, uh, reminding me that, me that um, Chan Chung. What about you, Chargalan? Mm -hmm. No, I would definitely second uh, what uh, Chan Chung said because uh, the conversations that we had with our batchmates and the things that we learn from each other, you know, what's uh, to, you know, what's actually politics like on the ground in Malaysia, in India, in Cambodia. I mean, that was the most interesting thing for me personally, you know, as a takeaway from Kasip. And also, I think. Uh, in retrospect, uh, I think what I learned is that, you know, pol politics is the same everywhere, you know, be it in Southeast Asia or it, be it in Germany, because even with German colleagues, you know, we had that bonding moment when, um, you know, there were, uh, actually we happened to be together when the 30th anniversary of the fall of Berlin Wall happened, right? And that's an experience that's also very important for Mongolia politically, because, you know, we were celebrate uh, this year. We celebrate the 30th anniversary of Mongolian democracy. So you know things like that. You know it was the, the conversations and the experiences that we share. I mean, building democracy, building our political parties, and maybe building our own personal political careers as well. So that was uh, the the friendships that we made and the um, support we give each other still. You know to the to this very day. You know because we're still in contact. And I would like, like to also say that, you know, for everyone who's uh, thinking of applying to CASIP, uh, you're gonna have a uh, two year, very interesting training program, but you're also gonna have uh, access to the CASIP alumni network, right? And uh, so that's, we have like 200, 300 members from, you know, all over Asia. And that's a network that's very um, valuable for a politician in this globalized uh, society, I guess. Yeah, so that would be uh, one of the most important takes for me. Also, um, Ray mentioned in his speech earlier about political calling and commitment to public service, right? And I think that's a very important aspect of the CASAP training. Because uh, as a politician, you know, it's important to understand what your goal in politics is and how, um, and how you uh, engage your uh, constituents and how, how, you, how you see uh, political service. So, and, uh, and it's very inspiring you know, to have a bunch of young people who are very committed to public service and they talk about it with such passion. So it, it makes you reflect on your own personal journey as well. So yeah, that, that would be my two cents, I guess. Thank you, Chargalan. Um, I, I don't know how, how, do, how would you say it if there's a second emotion, I would, is, is there a third emotion <laughs> or whatsoever? But true, I really agree um, that now that uh, I am now on the other side of CASIV as a program manager, um, it is quite important to understand that when you're designing the whole CASIV, 
that you provide also um, equal opportunity for informal discussion. So yes, the whole training is quite structured, uh, but uh, we are trying to find ways where formal um, lectures is actually less uh, time and then you provide mm -hmm. more time for open discussion. But even outside that formal structure or formal um, yeah, structure, then really a lot of learning, I would say, happens outside uh, the eight yeah. hour um, session mm -hmm. of lecture, Q&A, open forum, open discussion, because no matter how we try our best to avoid these topics, even after dinner or we, when we go out and uh, let's say explore different places, we still discuss and continue um, talking about our um, political uh, situation in our own countries, uh, our, um, I would say, struggles as young leaders, as young political leaders, and we realize that our experiences are actually being mirrored by the experiences of other young leaders, that there are similarities. And um, the similarities and actually even the differences uh, gives us or give us the inspiration or maybe like answers to uh, our situation that to say Jargalan or Changchung is experiencing this kind of problem in their own countries and they are able to share some strategies or how they dealt with it and then in my context i may not be able to to say think of that um intervention or action but because of this uh, informal sharing i learn more and become i mean it it, give, it opens my mind uh when i talk to uh my classmates or to say my other classifiers outside of the session so yes, really, um, apart from the resilient uh, topics or modules that has been uh, delivered by CAS, by CASIT for almost 10 years, and now it's 11th year, uh, we learn also a lot, uh, or we learn equally uh, from uh, informal sessions and uh, discussions. And I think that these this discussions um, continue even beyond um, the two years. And uh, I feel that the alumni network um, is getting stronger and sharing uh, our experiences and learning and even outside or beyond um, the CASIT program. So yes, uh, the most important thing that you learn in CASIT is it provides us lifelong learning. And I hope that that will also be the same for those who will apply or will be accepted uh, in the next uh, batch. So maybe I can continue with the next question uh, in terms of memorable experience. So uh, since we are live, then maybe uh, we can choose which memorable experience is um, good to share in public. But uh, of course, we have a lot of experience <laughs> in CASIP. So see, see, they are also laughing. I'm also laughing here. So of course, it's two years, right? And then we meet mm -hmm. five days or one week in every uh, session and every module. So really there's a lot of opportunity to, um, uh, I would say bond with your classmates. And these moments are, are really like, they, they are imprinted in our uh, experiences. So anyone who would like to share their most memorable experience uh, with CASIP? Jacqueline, you want to go first? <laughs> um, yeah, does it have to be? Um... Never mind. Uh, personal, professional experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll just focus. That I'll just focus. Um, inspire just our focus. prospective candidates. Yeah, I'll just focus on the formal trainings because you know the other part <laughs> might be a bit uh, <laughs> embarrassing. Um, anyways, in terms of formal training modules, I think the most uh, interesting uh, trainings for me personally were the simulation games because um, I think I did my first debate through a CASIP uh, training module. Like I've never had an official debate, you know, with the, uh, with the official rules and stuff. So that was my first experience and that was quite interesting. And also the simulation games that we had, those were the most fun we've had like uh, during the trainings because um, I remember the one tr uh, simulation game was that uh, there was a PR crisis management um, story. Uh, there was like an election and there was like an, a candidate for president in a country X. 
and then there was uh, uh, there was just revealed a um, a crisis of some sorts where there was a scandal with the candidate involved, and so we were supposed to uh, uh, do some role playing. And uh, one member of our team was the candidate, the other one was the you know PR person, the other was the political party chairman, things like that. So um, yeah, that was the most fun I think uh, because. Uh, yeah, we just had so much fun, you know, simulating that role playing thing, and everyone was so competitive, and um, yeah, you know, I things totally, like I that. Totally I think. Agree with you. Sorry, yes, I totally agree with you, Jargalan, that um, we are bringing young political leaders, and being competitive comes with nature. So really, you can see, um, even if these are just simulations or. Uh, exercises, they, I can really feel now that I'm a program manager that uh, they take this seriously, that they still uh, want to win, even this is just a simulation, no one wants to accept losing a game. And true that, yeah, CASIP offers a lot of um, simulation exercises and uh, mm -hmm. workshops, so not just pure lectures, a, uh, I would say, uh, elect, I mean, speaker offering uh, or discussing specific topics, but um, giving more opportunity for participants to really engage with each other. So this exercises, yeah, I, I would agree that uh, for Jargaland that um, there are specific simulations that are memorable, yeah. this campaigning simulations, uh, debates, uh, because I think, uh, since these are simulations, I would think that people really give their all because there's no accountability that maybe if you're wrong, no one will vote for you or whatsoever. But uh, yes, so these are really like uh, good <laughs> examples of how um, CASIP is not just a, a rigorous program, but also provides a fun part, also provides uh, an enjoyable um, experience for all participants. Uh, throughout the, the, the two years. What about you, Chan Chong? Yeah, just, just about to add, a uh, simulation game is fun. I think the, the best part is sometimes it unleash the real you uh, in the game. So while playing, when you got more involved, uh, then you, you turn up to be the real uh, evil, or I mean, the real, uh, <laughs> the real you in the game. So that makes the game really interesting. Um, I, I, I did uh, participate in some of the simulation game in CASIP programs, which I still remember till today. So you know how intense and how exciting it is. <laughs> but as for me, I think uh, uh, coincide with a question asked in the Facebook, uh, what about after two years, right? Uh, so to me, one of the memorable experience that I had, uh, apart from the plenty uh, in, along that two years, but uh, uh, would be, uh, I think, the 10th anniversary for, for the CASIP network uh, that happened last year, right, Ray? Uh, yes. So, yeah, so it, it was uh, so it was fantastic because it, the program managed to gather all the alumni members uh, in the past 10 years uh, of uh, CASIP graduates uh, to be together and also to update each other apart from that. Also to uh, cherish yeah, the fact that we are all a product of uh, CASIP programs and so happened that I was uh, nominated and uh, awarded the uh, one of the most out one of the most outstanding alumnus uh, which purely I think is luck uh, so <laughs> I, I think I think do not just confine yourself to that two years if I can recall correctly uh, the workshops that I've attended after that two years uh, is, is as much uh, or if not more than what I have experienced or what we have attended in that two years. So the alumni network is as important as the CASI program and it will carry you throughout your entire political career, I think, I, I believe. Yes, thank you so much, Shan Chung. And um, yeah, I forgot that. So to all those who are watching us, uh, either in Zoom or in, uh, on Facebook Live, I forgot to in, uh, add this information when I was introducing to uh, Chan Chung. So Chan Chung is actually our first uh, recipient of the most outstanding uh, CASIP alumnus. 
So we have launched that in 2020, last year, 2019, 2019 and uh, he bid uh, uh, how many, um, more than uh, 50 applicants or uh, yeah, applicants for the, the search. So really Chang Shung is, I mean, from his experience, he came or joined CASIP um, as an activist and then uh, got into the opposition, got into the ruling party and then opposition again. So really his experience of being a CASIPer exemplifies uh, what is it to be a young uh, political leader. And yeah. I agree that um, beyond CASIP, uh, the question of what is it for us um, after, so also, Chan Chung mentioned the, uh, the 10th year anniversary of the program, which we held last year in uh, Penang, Malaysia. So I would say also from my end, it was very uh, memorable to bring all together those who have uh, experienced or shared the same um, experience in terms of the CASIP training. And I would say that we are developing currently or before, um, 2019, we had this CASIP um, Leaders Caucus. So there is uh, another platform, a continuing platform for CASIP alumni to um, continue to engage, or I would say continue to um, learn uh, in terms of um, being political leaders. But I would say that uh, there is a plan right now um, after the 2019 10th uh, year anniversary to strengthen more the alumni network. So the idea is, uh, I, I, maybe I will not mention yet what's the program, but uh, that's something that we are uh, cooking right now. We hope to launch it within the year or next year. But the idea is um, this program will provide opportunity for CASIP alumni to continue learning about uh, democracy, uh, about political leadership, because we believe that um, learning democracy or learning political leadership is not a one, one time or one, one uh, setting um, uh, engagement. It is a lifelong learning process. And apart from uh, the lifelong learning process for our young leaders, we are also planning that as CASIP alumni, we believe that you are also an expert uh, of your own field. And we believe that you should share that to the public. You should share that to the, the rest of the Asian communities. That's why the program that we are developing will provide opportunity, not only for CASIP alumni to um, continue learning, but at the same time for the alumni to share their expertise, to share their experiences, to the general public. So the new program that we are uh, developing will not only cater to the needs of our CASIP alumni, but at the same time, it will also provide opportunity for the public, for other youth leaders to engage with CASIP alumni and to engage with CASIP. So I'm excited to um, hopefully launch that or the CAS PDA here in Singapore. Uh, uh, is excited that maybe this year we'll able to launch the program or maybe uh, early of uh, next year. So yes, there is a program or there is a, a process where this alumni, after their two years training, uh, they are engaged continually and learn, uh, continue to learn and continue to share uh, in, the, in their, I would say, political um, experience. Then, okay, so Speaking about, let's say, beyond CASIP, the two years or beyond two years. So what about, let's say, can you share a specific um, uh, experiences or learning that CASIP provided you that really helped you in your political career? Or maybe outside your political career, or there could be like, let's say in your professional career, there could be some um, topics or learning experiences from CASIP that not only apply to your political career, but also to your um, professional career? Um, who want to go first? Oh, you go. You know, you're the most <laughs> outstanding alumnus. 
I'm digesting because uh, too much memories uh, just came back, flashed back to me. <laughs> um, I, I think. Oh, shall I go? Uh, yeah, you, you want to go? Okay, sure, sure. Um, I would say, I mean, there's no school for politics, right? Uh, politics is not something that they teach you in in school and uh, it's something that you learn by doing it's something that you learn from your mentors your party uh, leaders you know from the people that you admire but uh, despite that I mean the concept although the two-year program has given me a kind of a structured um, look at what act activist politics is all about you know because I mean, I've been a member of my party for more than 10 years and I've been quite active politically before I joined CASA. But after CASA, it made me look at my career in a kind of a different, through a different lens, I guess, because, you know, it made me, um, it, it gave me some sort of a structure. Um, perhaps uh, it, was, it was the modules themselves. Also uh, the experiences of my batchmates and peers was also very important. Uh, the the way they uh, they're managing their political careers, you know, and uh, look at different political parties as well. And um, one of the interesting um, training modules for me was the uh, was uh, from the first session from the first uh, module. Uh, it was a uh, like a half day session on party ideology, and uh, right uh, like a month after that. I was, uh, I became a member of the working group for, uh, from my party on um, revising our party platform. So that half a day session gave me a lot to work with as we actually revised our party platform, you know? So having a structured look at the party ideologies, you know, from all over East, uh, Southeast Asia and Europe uh, you know, having that academic background while working on our, you know, actual party platform was uh, very, uh, uh, was very interesting and very uh, helpful for me, I would say, yeah. Great, thank you so much, Jorgala. What about Chanshu? Um, I, I concur with uh, Jacqueline on uh, how unique and uh, how customized the, the program is to us. I think uh, the program actually provides a very different reflections to each of us. I think that's a unique part of CASI because it's not like uh, a very uh, standardized template, uh, but you, you have to really earn it. You have to gain it yourself and you have to apply it. So what, what uh, I think matters me the most is the Germany experience in it because uh, um, I mean, how they value professionalism in politics, how they view things uh, so seriously, and it actually raised uh, the bar yeah, in, in my political uh, pursuit uh, to, to, to be uh, better and be uh, a more uh, politicians with quality. So I think that that helped me a lot qualitatively speaking. Uh, at the same time, I think Kasit to me is always like, um, whenever there is a fallback, so you, you have something there. So CASIP, uh, with its like ongoing workshop, uh, also some of the engagement that uh, from time to time, uh, whenever you need it, CASIP will be there to provide those platforms for you to learn, uh, update yourself, and also to make a better engagement with uh, politicians from other region. So it's more like a ready uh, campus. Whenever you need something, it's like your library. So you can go back and CASIP is there to provide so much and so intense of uh, information and contents to you. So uh, it's not just about the two years. And I think it's, it's much uh, well beyond that two years experience. Thank you, uh, Chang Shung. I, I truly agree that, um, I mean, I don't know like, um, we study, I study public policy, economics, engineering. There are courses for this, but of course there's no specific school or I would say program to be a politician, right? 
So yeah, maybe that's, if there is a course right. to be a president, I would enroll in that <laughs> or to be a mayor, right? I mean, maybe you easy. should maybe Sorry. you should start one, Ray. Maybe you should start one. <laughs> I mean, it would have been easier for all young political leaders if there's a specific program or course to be a congressman, a member of parliament, or uh, a, a president, right? Or prime minister. But there is none. So not. I think that's why really they like say, this. yeah. Sorry, yes, yeah, but yes. just, uh, that's probably why uh, I mean politics is an art, you see, because uh, an art is 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 so uh, different. Uh, you can't learn in schools, and probably you have to really experience it, like what Jaglin has said just now. Exactly, and but I think even with this idea, um, at least this CASIP as a school for young politicians give a specific, as what Jorgen would uh, say, uh, that in a way that minimum structure that is provided by CASIP um, is able to organize this varied experiences in our political careers, right? So yes, you may be an engineering graduate, you may be an econo uh, economics graduate, or maybe a literature graduate, but in the field of politics, all experiences are very crucial. And what CASIP provides is this structure that whatever experiences you have are actually applicable or useful in our political careers. So um, providing us or CASIP uh, providing that minimum structure of studying politics or being a political leader uh, makes sense uh, from this nuances of uh, varied um, ideas and uh, life experiences. So exactly. yes, uh, I think I agree that yeah, beyond these two years, um, CASIP uh, is, is really a lifelong um, learning. And I would like to share that apart from political careers, um, many um, CASIP alumni are actually becoming trainers themselves. And mm -hmm. they bring this CASIP modules with them they share to their community. And I think that multiplier effect of the learnings that we get from CASIP is very powerful because of course not, we don't expect that all of the graduates of CASIP will run for politics. Um, that would be a, a real success if 100% will run, but in reality, they don't run. So some will, go to private sector, some will go to civil society, to the academe, and some will really go to politics. But the what CASIP provides are actually um, transferable skills or um, ideas. And then, yeah, they, they, they train, they, they um, share what they have learned from CASIP. And because it's a modular, I would say, because it's a modular um, type or structure of delivery, then it's easier to um, use or adopt this module to your local context. And at the same time, use this module to train your um, young leaders at the same time. So yes, maybe at the time when we, we join CASIP, we are the young leaders, but maybe we'll be soon the senior leaders. And then that's our role in uh, the, the party development. Sorry? The old, the not so young. Leaders. Exactly. <laughs> like the right? No, no, no. <laughs> when CASIPers get old, they become presidents, right? So um, I, we're just waiting for our first president. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. So it's like uh, we're, we're training the, the successor generation, I would say. So that's the, the beauty of CASIP, investing so much in the youth, because at the end of the day, who, would, who else would um, continue uh, the governance in your own countries, but the youth. So yeah, so maybe patience is, is a virtue for CASIP that we should learn all. So, well, thank you again for that um, answer. And then maybe uh, one last um, question before we open the floor for um, questions from our um, audience. Uh, last one would be, of course, this Q&A is intended really for prospective candidates of CASIP. Um, for those who are planning or for those who are thinking of applying, uh, maybe those who are not decided yet. So what would be the best advice that you can give to our prospect candidates uh, for them to really feel or decide that 
CASIP is uh, a worthwhile endeavor or for them to really apply? Mm -hmm. I would say, um, based on my personal experience, that um, an ideal applicant would have um, a lot of exposure to political party life. You know, how, how many years does it take on the application way? Is it two or three uh, years? Minimum of two years. Yeah, so uh, an ideal candidate would have um, a lot of uh, exposure to a political party life in their own uh, country, uh, be it locally or nationally, because uh, it pays to have some sort of um, knowledge and uh, experience on the ground in order to benefit the most from the CASA program, I would say. So, um, so if you're thinking of whether you want to apply or not, and uh, uh, you can't decide, I mean, just uh, reflect back on what you went through as a party member and, you know, do you need this sort of training and in, at, during this period of your life, uh, during this time of your political career, I would say. And um, also, um, in the previous batches, we had to write a project report, and that's no longer the case, right? So, like a pro project proposal. So, I mean, it's, uh, yeah. So, uh, Ray made it much easier for you guys. So, uh, just, uh, yeah, so you just have to, run to write uh, several essays, right? So, uh, I what? think. Um, no, no more uh, projects. I want to explain. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, so, uh, so, anyway, in order for your application to shine through, I think uh, you should concentrate uh, most on the, uh, on what you did, what you accomplished as a party member on the ground, you know, how you reached out to your community, you know, things like that, and, uh, and show your commitment to public service, right? Uh, so things like that, I think, would uh, matter most for uh, a successful application. And uh, just on a lighter note, you should get to know this guy, Ray Padgett. I think uh, uh, you should... Uh, stalk him and uh, see what he likes, you know, in order to have a successful application. <laughs> That's the most strategic advice I would, I would guess. <laughs> <laughs> thank All you, right. thank you, Jagalan. What about you, Chanshu? I, I think Jagalan is a lot sum up um, who, I mean, whom should apply. So, so let me just elaborate like on whom shouldn't apply for CASIP. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah, if you just want, if you plan to make a change in politics, uh, you just want to just follow, sort of follow the flows. Uh, you want to earn a living in politics. Uh, please don't apply, because uh, <laughs> for you. Uh, in Malaysia, we call like if you want to cherry makan, it's like you want to earn, you just want to earn a living in politics, right? So then you shouldn't mm -hmm. apply. Um, uh, secondly, uh, if you think you know a lot, uh, you are already very good. Uh, you don't have that kind of uh, rooms for learning and exposure, then CASI probably is not for you. Uh, thirdly is, of course, if you are um, the son of the minister and if you think you can be someone uh, easily without going through all this, <laughs> probably you don't have to apply. Um, and, and I think more... I mean, above all is, is your enthusiasm. If you, are, if you don't have that enthusiasm, uh, you, I mean, feel the burn, right? You have to really feel uh, something is burning there uh, or else, uh, I mean, CASIP probably is not so suitable for you. Uh, and, and, and I must, uh, no, no prejudice, but I think uh, most of the Germans are very pretty straightforward and very high expectation. <laughs> so, have to uh, really do your best in your application, be truthful, uh, and have humility yeah, in, in, in writing what, what you know and what you don't know. It's okay that you admit what you are, why you are not there yet. It's, it's okay because you are young politicians. Uh, so uh, wish you good luck in your application. If you think all these criteria, uh, you, you don't fit it, then probably you are the right person to apply. Great. Um, thank you, Chan Shun, for, I would say, for those bold advices. Yes, uh, for the applicants, um, there's a part there 
that talks about your um, motivation. So the personal motivation, I think there are three questions um, about the, the interest in politics and then the question about how would CASIP you think would help you in your future career. And I think there's also a question about um, your, your plans about your uh, future um, um, career. So also Jargalan mentioned, um, maybe Jargalan can join us again, um, mentioned about the political project. So yes, uh, I don't know if it's a good news or a bad news for the new batch um, that there's no more political project. So just a, a, a background for those who are applying for this next batch, or I think this is started with the 11th batch because um, we did a CASIP impact evaluation and based on the results of the impact evaluation, uh, we tried to introduce um, new uh, measures that would improve the, I would say, improve the, the quality of the program. So before from batch one to batch 10, one of the requirements to apply is to make a political project proposal that becomes your work throughout the two years, right? But um, we changed that or replaced that with what we call now the Bridging Democratic Leadership Program. So it's also a three module or three sessions um, activity, uh, which means that the participants of 11th batch, or let's say the future participants of the 12th batch, will have to undergo a series of um, leadership sessions or leadership training, and we call it bridging democratic leadership. So it's more on trying to nurture or develop what is it to be a democratic leader, because at the end of the day, our hope from CASIP is to produce democratic leaders and not the other way around. So they have these different sessions. It's also for three sessions. So the first session is about um, ownership. Second session is about co-ownership. And third session is about co-creation. So that's now the, the, the replacement of the political um, project. But I think in terms of um, uh, the, the rigor, they have more assignments now compared before. So every module, they have to deliver specific assignments that will be helpful in their political careers. Like example, um, module one, so they have this assignments in terms of um, mapping out their political journey, mapping out their leadership capital development plan, mapping out their um, public narrative, mapping out their um, values. So these are crucial in terms of uh, for someone who is young developing their um, leadership. And then the next session, their assignments would be making their own campaign plan, assuming they will run, because we think that maybe at some point they can use it. And then the third one is making their own development plan, assuming that they become leaders or elected leaders. So they have at least a blueprint already on what to do if given the power or be given the chance to be elected. So it becomes more uh, focused in what kind of activities or um, outputs you want to produce that is something helpful in your future, uh, future political career. But of course, the I would say I uh, also have a very good experience with the political projects um, uh, that I implemented during my CASIP time. But uh, I hope that this will also be helpful for the future career. So yes, there's no more political project, but there is a, a replacement that is equally um, uh, helpful for the, the young leaders. So I hope that um, all those uh, who are watching us on Facebook Live and those who have joined us here in, in um, Zoom uh, will now have an idea on uh, how to apply or uh, what do you think the kind of candidate that CASIP is looking for? Uh, do you think if this is fit for you? Uh, you think if this will um, help you uh, become more or become a better leader uh, in your communities? 
So um, I guess um, we can now open the discussion uh, or the, the, the floor to uh, questions from our um, participants. So first of all, I would like to thank again, um, Jorgalan and Chan Chung for sharing your time and of course, for sharing your experiences and learning. And I think this is very helpful for all our prospect candidates um, for, uh, for their plans in how to um, uh, make a good or a strong application. So I would like to invite um, those who are joining us here in Zoom and those who are watching us on Facebook Live to type your comments or to type your questions uh, on the chat box. So we have Q&A chat box here in Zoom and we have the comment box, uh, comment box in the Facebook Live. If you have questions, uh, you may uh, type them. Uh, let us know if you are addressing the question to Jargalan or to Chan Chung, or maybe to the whole general idea of the application process. So maybe I can start with one of the questions here raised. Um, one is like, um, I am currently with a think tank and have intentions of becoming a politician in the coming years, can I still join as I am only currently volunteering in a political party? So um, yes, uh, one is yes that uh, CASIP encourages those who are politically active uh, leaders or young leaders to join the, the program. So yes, even if you are in uh, the civil society um, sector, or even in the private sector or in the academic sector, um, as long as that calling, the political calling is there, as long as that, um, I would say the commitment to public service is there, yes, you can apply. Um, we have experiences uh, in the past that not all participants are actually members of political parties. They are actually uh, leaders of civil society organizations because we believe that Civil society also play, uh, plays a lot of role in uh, politics and um, interest aggregation. So yes, uh, you can apply, uh, but of course uh, you have to show that the commitment for public service is there, uh, not because uh, you just want to uh, join the, the program. Then the second question, yes, it's answered already. We discussed about what's, the, what's after two years. So um, yes, we have a continued uh, uh, activities for CASIP alumni and not just for CASIP alumni, but also for uh, open to um, public. Anything else? Okay, we have one question here. Does it allow interested people who have currently enrolled in a, a master program? Of course, yes. I mean, um, there's no requirement, okay. So maybe for those who are, have seen the application form, um, there's no requirement for um, uh, education qualification. So we don't, have, we don't discriminate in terms of your educational background. Uh, we have some, I think we have some um, alumni who have not finished college because maybe of their circumstances in their own countries. And we have some alumni also who are PhD graduates or doing their masters, uh, not a problem for us as long as you can commit. That's why it's very important to really think over about the application process because you need to commit um, at least one week per, uh, per six months. So every semester, at least one week that you should attend um, uh, the CASIP program because otherwise, as I said earlier, two consecutive um, sessions or workshops uh, that you are absent, then that would be tantamount to like withdrawing your, par uh, your participation from the program. So yes, uh, yes, even if you are doing your PhD, even if you are doing your masters, if you think CASIP will help you, you can still apply. But of course, Chan Chung said that if you uh, are well-learned already, then maybe you can share the opportunity to some other who might need it more or who might uh, benefit it more, uh, more from the, the, the training. What else? Well, uh, can I add? Yes, okay. yes, Chan Chung. I, I think if you are currently pursuing your masters or some professional programs, 
uh, it shows that you you want to learn more. So actually, it is a good sign. <laughs> it's just that um, uh, because uh, the course that in the program you have to attend uh, a workshop every six months, right? Yes. So you have yes. to make sure uh, you you have that rooms to. Um, I mean, put aside your studies uh, to join this workshop. I think this is the prerequisite because we hope that there will be no drops up, drop outs from uh, the classic programs or, or from your master. <laughs> See, so uh, okay. that, that makes sense. Exactly true. Um, but anyway, I mean, for those who are interested, the the schedule are in a way um, predictable. So February um, first session, second session around August, and then um, third session around April the next year, and the last session will be around September. And from our end, uh, from CAS, we give you um, ample time, like three months or two months. Uh, we give you the invitation or the information. When is the specific date? Where is the location? So that you can actually make the necessary preparation to uh, participate. So yes, um, there's a question of when, is the when will be the application for the next batch? So right now we are the 11th batch. So we, we are open for the 12th batch, uh, which will start next year. And the application is ongoing and the application process will end um, this September 13. And where can you get the the what's this the application form um we have posted that on uh, facebook there is a link we can also post it again uh uh to the link to our website and you can download the information about CASIP at the same time in um, the application form itself so or you can email me i can also send you uh, uh, back the the document for uh, the CASIP application there is a good question here um what were the challenges you faced as young politicians during the program? Anyone? I would, I'll take that one, I guess. Okay. <laughs> um, I would say since um, every CASA batch is so diverse, I mean, you get uh, 25 people from more than 10 countries and there are all sorts of religions, all sorts of nationalities, you know, all sorts of beliefs. So sometimes um, you get into a heated argument with somebody over uh, an idea or, or over something that's very abstract. And um, um, it may come as, a, uh, as an obstacle at that moment, but um, yeah, I'd say it makes you wiser, you know, down the road, you know, it makes you more open to very radically different ideas than yours, you know, like, for me personally, I've never had a lot of, um, like, exposure to uh, Muslim uh, friends, I guess, and so some of the debates we had, you know, it was, you know, religion is a thorny issue, you know, everywhere, and, uh, you know, things like that, you know, like, but that's both uh, that that's the good thing about CASIP because you know you get uh, such exposure to so many different diverse viewpoints that it just uh, makes you grow as a lot as a person and then it makes your mind wider, I guess. Thank you, yep. Chargalan. Anything to add, Chanchu? Yeah, exactly. I think uh, we have to uh, be mentally uh, also prepared and. Uh, have a very open-minded view on everything. The moment your views or your belief, uh, uh, I mean, got challenged, the moment you are feeling uncomfortable, uh, actually, that's a good sign. That means yeah. your belief system is being challenged. Uh, but what you believe might not be 100% uh, objectively right, objectively true, right? So should have a very open mind and to have discussion uh, I think uh, eventually it will benefit both sides. Both both sides, uh, and I think uh, having participants from different countries is actually uh, an asset. One of the very precious uh, experience that you will gain from CASIP. Great, I, I understand. Uh, I, I mean, I I truly agree that the idea because based on the impact evaluation. Um, 
resolved that one of the outcomes really for CASIPERS uh, experiencing or after CASIP uh, is the increase in tolerance. So um, it's quite true that um, uh, many of us, especially for young politicians, that we are very in, uh, engrossed with our um, communities, with our own countries, right? We, I mean, unfortunately, we cannot avoid that at some point or some parts of our thinking is very nationalistic. We want to protect our, um, our own interests as, as representatives or future representatives of our own countries, right? So we have that aspect or we have the portion in our belief system or in our own uh, agenda as, as leaders. But going to CASIP as what Jargalan and Chan Chung has share, uh, have shared, that you meet, imagine from your own countries itself, sometimes you meet the opposition party. Sometimes you, if you are the ruling party, you meet the opposition party. And sometimes if you are the ruling uh, opposition party, you meet the members of the ruling party or you meet those um, individuals who have different religions, who have different beliefs. And CASIP provides an avenue for you to openly discuss and not be judgmental on our own beliefs. And that discussion itself is very rich and it really opens the mind of uh, CASIP alumni. So most of the comments or feedback that they give us after um, participating in CASIP is, it, it increases their tolerance in, in uh, tolerance to worldviews, tolerance to different ideas. And I think that's very important for young politicians because um, we can avoid that the world is really connected. Yes, there are uh, strong movements for nationalism, but uh, as long as the world is really connected, then at, at some point we need an open mind once you are in your, um, once you get elected because when you get elected, you are not elected just for a specific um, a group of people, but you're elected for a community. You are elected for the whole population of your country. And sometimes your interests or your problems or your responsibilities are not just within your country, but goes beyond because problems in the Philippines might affect uh, the problems in uh, other countries or let's say uh, transnational problems like climate change, uh, disaster, financial or recession, economic problems, they affect uh, all countries. So if you don't have that capacity to be open and to be tolerant to, uh, tolerant to different ideas, um, that will be difficult for your leadership. So I think that's a good uh, point uh, uh, for this I'm um, sharing that for CASIPERS or for um, alumni um, being more tolerant is actually a positive um, uh, impact that we uh, benefit from it. So yes, Indeed. and I am happy that one of our alumni shout out to, I'm not used to this, as, as if I'm now an, an online star here doing this um, live. So, <laughs> But I think we have to get used to this, no? We're still young and uh, yeah, yeah. we're still to part of the millennial generation. Uh, oh, but yeah. I mean, maybe like the, those graduating from the millennial generation. So we thank you. Uh, shout out to Lee Zin Yong. He is our alumnus from Singapore. And yeah. I'm happy that he pointed out that many CASIP alumni are involved in outreach programs in their own capacities, true. And they're also, um, he understands that CAS offices, because oh, um, CAS uh, is present in other Asian countries. So I think this is also a good opportunity that for some of our alumni, they still get connected with CAS offices and they get, they, they get involved in the activities of CAS in different countries. So let's say in Malaysia, we have CAS office, in Mongolia, in the Philippines. So as an alumni, you get the opportunity to be involved also in the projects of the of CAS in, in their own country. So that's a good point. Thank you, um, uh, Lee, for uh, sharing that. There's one question here. Could you please specify or clarify whom do you consider a senior functionary of political party? So yes, um, I understand that the nomination of uh, the, the nomination letter is one of the required document 
So let's say example, I'm a member in one district and um, it does not necessarily need that your party president is your, uh, nom uh, how you call that, uh, the one that nominates you. So um, to Deepak Kaushik, um, let's say your district chair or district secretary general or your, um, where, where you belong in a constituency, whoever is the leader there who can vouch for your um, participation, uh, then that would be um, acceptable for us. So does not necessarily need your top um, uh, leader to nominate you. So no, no, so it's, it's acceptable. What else? Do we still have other questions? Okay. Um, for those who are watch, uh, who are uh, watching us in uh, Facebook Live and who just uh, tuned in, you can still continue posting your questions uh, on the comment box. So if you have other questions about CASIP, about the application process, so we are here, Chan Chung and Jargalan and myself are ready to um, give you uh, answers or clarifications. So there is one here. Um, does CAS provide additional supports for CASIP alumni, especially when they are already actively involved in local politics? So um, I guess the idea is uh, CAS is very open to proposals uh, from the CASIP alumni. So you can submit um, proposals to CAS and from our end, we also help facilitate that so uh, if the CAS um, offices, uh, they find your proposals very uh, relevant and would have benefit the community or your communities. So I think they are open to uh, supporting. But again, as I said earlier, um, we have plans uh, for how CASIP alumni will be engaged with the public. So I will keep that, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to share that, but uh, <laughs> I'll wait for the launching of that project and we hope that CASIP will be more, or CASIP alumni will be uh, seen uh, or will be more active uh, in their uh, own communities. Wow. Don't surprise us, uh, Ray. <laughs> of surprise course. I will give you ample time. I will, I will inform you uh, uh, ahead of time for this um, changes or for this new opportunities because definitely uh, there's a lot of talent uh, in, in CASIP. Uh, or in CASIP uh, alumni network that should be top. And I think, uh, I believe that equally from your side, you are uh, more than willing to uh, share your talents to the rest of the public. So other questions. So I guess um, for those who were asking where to get the application form, um, please refer to the comment box. We just shared to you the link where you can find the more information about CASIP and at the same time the application form. So you can download the application form and then um, my email details uh, is also, um, uh, what's this, it's available there. You can uh, contact me. I can provide you the Word version of the application form because I think we provide, um, we have uh, uploaded the, the PDF, fillable form, uh, which you can use. So other questions. So I think um, we have uh, answered uh, most of the questions for those who join us here in um, the Zoom um, uh, webinar at the same time in our um, Facebook Live. So, okay, there's one more question here. Um, I have keen interest and uh, do you only accept uh, members of political parties. So once again, um, uh, the idea is we are open to uh, politically motivated young leaders. Um, does not necessarily follow that you are members of political parties, but that would be ideal if all applicants are coming from political parties, but we are also open for those who are members of the civil society or maybe from government or maybe from the business sector or from, from the private sector, as long as we can see the alignment of your interest and your future plans with the um, objectives of CASIP. So again, the general main goal of CASIP 
is to help uh, or young leaders become um, active in their um, uh, leadership or let's say capacitate young leaders in terms of their um, service to the public and of course in strengthening their political parties because we believe that political parties are uh, uh, important or crucial in uh, improving our democracies. So that's why that's good Chan Chung that um, he pointed out uh, that those who are planning not to, to leave their parties uh, should not join the, the program, which is, I mean, I understand that, yeah, better join other, because there are a lot of leadership training available out there, right? So yes. the thing is, CASIP offers a specific value, a specific um, uh, uh, objective uh, compared to other uh, trainings. So, uh, what is important is that your objective, personal objective, your political objective, your career objective fits with what uh, CASIP wants to um, achieve also. And we hope, because the idea is, we hope that your journey will not be wasted, right? Because what's the point that you spend two years with us and then at the end of the day, you're not able to use whatever learning or inputs we gave you. So better um, those who feel that CASIP will help them, then that would be a good um, opportunity for you to, to, to really apply. Mm -hmm. So I think there are no more questions. Let me check the Facebook Live. Yes, so maybe to wrap up our Q&A, um, I would like to ask Chan Chung and Jargalan for your your final, not final, because uh, I think there's a lot of opportunities for you to mingle with um, the CASIP network and the public, but maybe some few words uh, uh, to uh, our um, prospective uh, applicants before we end the session. Um, yeah, sure. Um, I think I have to slightly correct myself. Um, not everyone that, uh, uh, I mean, wants to join this program must be frontline politician. I, I think that's not true because uh, CASIP is, is meant for those that are interested in politics and there are a few uh, layers in politics which you can get involved and of course to participate in election is one. I think uh, um, above all more important is your enthusiasm on the public, uh, uh, what do you call it, to improve the, the public sphere right how, how do you want to participate in in democracy and also to make sure uh, uh, your your inspiration get translated into action and uh, you want to bring change through a political channel i think that uh, kasip is is for you thank you so much chan shu chorgala sorry chorgala uh you're muted. The sun yeah, is just too nice there. The sun yeah. Is <laughs> so warm. Um, well, before I said that you, uh, it, it would be good if you were a member of a political party, but then, um, you know, as Ray and Chen Chung mentioned, there are a lot of different dimensions to political activism. And uh, in recent years, we've seen uh, problems such as you know, people are not believing in parties and, you know, civil activism is on the rise. You know, we, we look at the Belarus election, you know, a couple of days ago and things like that. You know, we, we, people are just, young people are taking it to the streets, you know, to um, uh, raise their voices. So um, politics comes in all different uh, types and colors. So it doesn't matter whether you are a political, a member of a political party or uh, not, you know, uh, as long as you ha uh, share that uh, vision of politics where commitment to public service, you know, is a key uh, component of your vision, I guess. I mean, I think that's, um, you know, the most important thing, especially for CASAPers that I've interacted with. And um, I would also like to say that, um, you know, the CASIP alumni network is a great big family that's waiting to welcome you, you know, as you embark on your journey of two years, you know, in the CASIP batch. And I think it's an invaluable opportunity for anyone, 
for anyone you know who's interested in broadening their minds and making friends all over the world and um yeah i wish i was uh back when i was applying you know i would uh, <laughs> i would love to do this uh, this journey again you know so yeah happy for everyone who's considering applying at this moment I know Jargala, there was a moment when I was um, at some point thinking of uh, why not create a CASIP All-Star for CASIP version 2.0. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I, don't know, I would apply definitely again. apply so, for that one. <laughs> why not? I mean, let's see if the idea will hold water when we uh, propose it. But yeah, I mean, true uh, that uh, really the idea of this um, Q&A session is to um, provide guidance to those uh, prospective candidates who are thinking um, to apply for CASIP. So, I mean, um, we decided to uh, give you this um, session so that it will help you find, um, I would say the, the, the fitness of um, your intention of joining and what uh, CASIP can provide you. Because at the end of the day, the success of the CASIP depends on um, the alignment of our interests, of our objectives, because otherwise it will just be a future exercise if um, uh, you applied for CASIP and then uh, CASIP uh, wasn't able to provide or uh, address your interests because they were different. So we are thankful again uh, that um, our alumni here, uh, Chan Chung and Jargalan, were able to join us because I think uh, they themselves uh, uh, could provide uh, the testimonials on how CASIP uh, is very valuable um, as a leadership or capacity uh, development program in their um, political careers or as young leaders in their own communities. So. We hope that this is also the same uh, for the rest who are um, watching us, for those who have joined us. So we would like to uh, first thank um, those who have joined us in Zoom and those who have tuned in in our Facebook Live. And this is really our first effort to um, help uh, prospective candidates um, uh, be guided in their uh, application process. But of course, um, this is not may not be enough for all of you for all your questions. Um, we are still open, so uh, you can chat or give us a message on our Facebook account or face, Facebook page if you have other questions that we were not able to address on how to successfully apply for um, CASIP. And on behalf uh, from our side here, from the CASIP team, from the CAS team, from our director, Mr. Christian Ashley, um, uh, Rubia and Kismet, and from my end, we would like to express our heartfelt thanks for uh, Jargalan and uh, Chanchu for uh, sharing your time this lovely afternoon uh, to, uh, to be with us and to be with the prospective um, uh, applicants of CASIP and maybe our future or future members of the CASIP um, family. And once again, thank you to all who join, who have joined us here in the Zoom uh, room and for those who have tuned in in our um, Facebook Live. Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, we wish you all the best. Uh, we hope to receive all your applications. And again, if you have some questions, please do not hesitate. We are here to provide you guidance. You just email us, just contact us on Facebook. So once again, thank you uh, from our end. And we wish you all the best and have uh, a good uh, day ahead. And thank you and good afternoon. Bye-bye.